Okay, here we're looking at the animal phylum Annelida. A nice little way to try to get you to pronounce the word properly. And if you recognize this picture, this is the phylum that the earthworm falls under. So what's key about this particular phylum? Well, it's the rise of segmentation. So this is kind of in the early innovations of the body plan of Hercilomates. Segmentation is one of those key factors. Um, this is the first kind of phylum that shows this um, as an evolutionary kind of step. The basic body plan of a, a, a analid is that the tube within a tube concept. So the, the digestive tract is suspended within the tube of the coelom. So we see a tube within a tube, and this actually holds true for us. Our intestines and our digestive system is a tube within our body cavity. So that's where the term tube within a tube comes into play. Now, I'm not going to require for at least my class all the knowing of all the individual um, identifications here, but it could be helpful if we do do a dissection of an earthworm. Kind of the outside view here, and there's segmentation. There's three key body plan characteristics. One is repeated segments. One can be specialized segments. And one can be these connections. So each of these plays a role when we talk about segmentation of a particular animal. So worm reproduction, they're very important for soil health. They pull organic matter, carbon-based typically, into the soil mixing the material. Worms have both male and female re reproductive organs, and this clitellum is the main function to store the eggs of the worm. That's located right here. So that's our clitellum right there. So this is earthworms mating. Um, it's kind of a rare sight to see. They're very sensitive to ground movement, and if you're walking very heavily on the ground. Uh, both of these worms are very quick about going back down into the burrows below ground where you won't see them. If you want to learn more about how earthworms reproduce, there's a great YouTube video link provided here. I know this might be a little bit of a shocker of an image. Um, probably wasn't expecting this, but if again we do that earthworm dissection, this is another great way to view it. Or if you're not fortunate enough to be able to take my class and experience it for yourself, uh, this is another video link here, 21 minutes of an earthworm dissection. So hopefully you find that um, interesting. Um, be a little bit longer than this video here. Key features here, segments within a long body that's covered with mucus to help conserve water. Again, we are terrestrial base. These animals need to find a way to conserve water. They have the presence of both a mouth and an anus. They have stiff hair, tall bristles that aid in their movement through the soil. Commonly hermaphrodites meaning each individual carries both male and female organs. Earthworm anatomy, again, remember earthworms accelerate nutrient cycling in the soil plant system. This is the head region, the mouth region. This is where they're first taking in some of that food and passing it through that tube within a tube concept. And I'm not going to be requiring you to know all the individual parts. Just realize the heart, yes, that is plural and many lines, they have more than one heart there kind of passing and helping their circulatory system along. So just because they're more primitive doesn't necessarily mean that they contain less organs than we have. Uh, you could see example of the hearts, with it being plural, there's more than one. If you've been following on some of the other videos, this is kind of just that quick summary. Do you know what distinguishes these three particular phylum apart from one another? What similarities they may have? Uh, just kind of that quick little review slide for that quick comparison. Can you be able to separate these three different phylum? If not, there's videos on each.